Hi, my name is Max Nentwich, and I'm happy to give my short, well, flash overview over rapid neural responses in humans to visual and semantic change in videos. We analyzed a pretty exciting data set of simultaneously recorded intracranial EEG and eye tracking in epilepsy patients. And the patients watched up to 50 minutes of movies, a mixture of different clips from animations to documentaries about monkeys and Inscapes, which is a video of morphing shapes with some music. Over 19 patients, the electrodes cover almost the entire brain with a concentration in the temporal lobes. In total, we analyzed more than 4,000 channels. The questions that we asked were, which feature would drive the strongest and most widespread nerve responses? Based on previous literature, we expected that motion in movies would be the prominent feature. And we compared the responses to motion to the responses of scene cuts and saccades. What we found that surprisingly, the responses to scene cuts and saccades were stronger and more widespread than for motion. The figure here shows this effect in the cuneus, for example. We found the filters that map from each stimulus to the broadband high amplitude envelope, which is basically a high gamma activity in the intracranial EEG. Each block here shows the filter, which is equivalent to event-related potential in one channel for all three stimuli, optical flow as a measure for motion, scene cuts and saccades. Each block shows groups of channels where the responses are significant for different combinations of feature. For example, here, these are channels that respond to scene cuts, but not to saccades and optical flow. The second plot is channels that respond to saccades, but not to optical flow and scene cuts. Overall, the high frequency gamma activity is increased after scene cuts, and some channels also decreased for up to one second. We have much shorter responses to saccades that are almost equally widespread, but very sparse responses to motion. Specifically in the occipital lobe, we have almost all channels responding to scene cuts and saccades, and even over half of the channels responding to motion. This is also shown here where the electrodes are colored by which stimulus they respond to, where Blue and green channels are saccades and scene cuts, respectively. Red channels respond only to motion. And these mixed channels that you can see a lot in the occipital lobe respond to different combinations of stimuli. So as can be seen here in parietal, temporal, and frontal lobes, we still have lots of channels responding to scene cuts and saccades, but very few to motion. And these channels also respond pretty specifically either to saccades or scene cuts for the most part. We then asked whether the responses to scene cuts are driven by low level visual features or also by semantic changes across the cuts. For this, we recruited participants online to annotate the event boundaries. Event boundaries are moments in the movies where participants agree that something about the semantics changed. We then link the scene cuts to these event boundary annotations and find match cuts that have similar visual features but are unrelated to event boundaries. Again, on the example of the cuneus, we find groups of channels that respond only to event cuts but not to match cuts. Other channels that respond only to match cuts that are not significantly responding to event cuts, and some channels that have significant responses to their type of cuts. We have um, a high share of electrodes responding in the occipital lobe. Similar to the last result, also these channels respond indiscriminately to event and match cuts, as shown here also by channels with this brown color. Going into temporary parietal and frontal lobe, channels respond much more specifically. 
And more and more channels respond to event cuts only, as shown here by a lot of right channels, especially here clusters in the temporal lobe. We think that these responses are related to what has been found in the fMRI literature about event boundaries, with the exception though that we didn't find many univariate responses in the hippocampus. Thank you for your attention and stay up to date by visiting our lab website or my